रमेश जी आप और हम वियतनाम में मिले इस कॉन्फ्रेंस में यस एंड इट वाज नाइस टू सी दैट इन लास्ट फाइव इयर्स वियतनाम हैज डन वेरी बिग प्रोग्रेस एंड इट अपीयर्स दैट अ डेवलपिंग इकोनॉमी लाइक वियतनाम कैन डू सो वेल एंड नाउ दे इज अ ट्रेड सरप्लस विद बिग कंट्रीज लाइक अमेरिका एंड इट इज बिकमिंग अ बिग एक्सपोर्ट इकोनॉमी पर कैपिटल इनकम इज ऑलमोस्ट डबल ऑफ इंडिया फार्मर्स इनकम इज ऑल्सो गोइंग अप फार्मर्स हैव अडॉप्टेड होल लॉट ऑफ न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी आपको इंडिया के बारे में भी पता है yes. वियतनाम के बारे में भी पता yes. है आपके अपने एक्सपीरियंस से आपको 10-15 साल हो गए यहाँ पे नो आई एम हियर फॉर 33 थ्री थर्टी थ्री ईयर्स तैतीस साल में आपने वियतनाम को बदलते हुए देखा है कैन यू सजेस्ट और टेलस कि वियतनाम ने ऐसा क्या किया जो इतनी तेजी से बदला हुआ है वियतनाम ग्रोथ very in my uh, physically and i have seen every development in vietnam from the ground level to what today vietnam economy is actually one is important is the government policies what uh, they have uh, providing uh, to the foreign investors and also give examples yeah for investors and which is making more comfortable uh, because one is the labor uh, is very cheap and uh, initially of course they had unskilled labor but they developed the skilled labor and today if you see every area of industries from agricultural to manufacturing to processing and value addition they have added a lot if you see agriculture cashew or i like example in uh, 25 30 years back cashew was just a small volume of business which uh, vietnam uh, was uh, production and uh, exporting then okay, all of us in some india was a big yeah, player india was a big player and uh, india was a big consumer consumer also importer yes. sole importer and consumer consumer processing and processing export also and also exporting so Correct. india had a bigger role in the world market because after brazil brazil of course was a bit giving competition from the north uh, the us america side but india had a bigger share of the market in terms of uh, importing raw materials as well as processing and uh, the, the, so they had enjoyed that comfort in that once vietnam entered then with india had little bit challenge and also price what india is to import those days was all cash was below less than 1000 dollars it was doesn't move uh, 500 to 800 dollars but after vietnam came of course there was a competition the price parity changed the market uh, changed then mix change and secondly today if you see the same cashew is being doubled today and the kernel price has gone up the raw material price has gone up because of the demand and the market it's just one of the example and why vietnam grow so fast because they are very fast learners okay very fast learners and today so learn see, from where fast they, learners they, they learn, learn from where from you know they have government spends a lot of money in technology Okay. so they have uh, key professors universities uh, in technical universities uh, where they have very key uh, technical professors who supports them in the system like developing uh, related to food industry related to, to any industry they know that there's some demand is there but, but the government of india spends a lot on uh, yes of course government of india spends but of course if you see in cashew industry we were uh doing by cottage industry we uh-huh. didn't had mechanized process we still were doing very primitive uh, uh, processing Correct. that is still and been continue only this uh, short span of 20 years india started to get into uh, machinery technology that to import from vietnam oh i see import from vietnam and vietnam uh, you know has uh, so selling each and every machinery to india, india now, okay. which india now actually using currently all the machineries processing machinery so from vietnam the machinery which vietnam is using yeah. they develop locally or they of import of course uh, they have developed uh, from uh, chinese uh, they have also used uh, italian uh, machinery also italian also there's a company which process, uh, does a processing machinery they have uh, you know taken all the technical then they have they designed their own which uh, makes to their own comfort which the factory requires so today vietnam has come to that modernization okay. today if we had 
500 workers to 1000 workers today they are doing with just 100 workers just 10% okay. or 20% of, of the workforce so they have made all the process from efficient efficiently with more modernized machine and they keep working r and d to develop more better uh, machinery to scale up the speed scale up the processing scale up all the defaults what they are facing they are still updating. But uh, if I put the same situation in Indian context, mm. in India we are talking about, for example, cashew or food industry for employment generation. Mm. And no, where true. we are doing for export promotion. That's right. What is your experience that who is more logical? No, is of course, see, we are such we are a very, very, very big country, India with 1.4 billion population. Of course, we have challenges in employment and we have to give employment. We cannot over a, over a night, we cannot go modernization. Because that will affect the employment because we have many. But then, how we will survive in export market? No, that's the reason. But that's what India has to educate uh, many uh, unemployed people in various industry, giving more technical qualification and make uh, the, the more skilled people so that everybody gets uh, uh, technical jobs. And secondly, of course, India is such a big market, we have to double up the productions because uh, currently, if, with whatever size of factory we have, we have to double up the so that employment can be. Given Great. more, uh, so it means more on productivity, more on processing, more capacity. Yes, so means we have to scale up, we scale have to up. take the whole business seriously. Yeah, we have to take scale because see, whatever material we have today, like a cashew, also like India is importing equally uh, close to 1.5 to 2 million tons. But in the long run, how long you'll be importing now? Africa is trying to do their own uh, processing. industries, processing. So, in the long run, in another five years, 10 years. Are we sure we'll get enough raw materials? And uh, you will have uh, tomorrow, India may start importing cash if this situation goes continue. India may import the finished but products. Finished products, instead so of raw materials. Yeah, then again you are putting the employment under risk. In the morning session, uh, you were discussing about the role of cashew board in India. You know, yeah, the, yeah, I know there's a cashew so board. So uh, you are not happy with that. Why, why you are saying that you know uh, they should upgrade their way of working yeah, and thinking? Because see, since we have a cashew board, the cashew board is to promote, develop the industry. Correct. Since uh, we have been a very old uh, industry, this cashew is not a new to India. It's a very old industry. As one of the very uh, needed industry, in because cashew is one big consumption market, but cashew board should have, uh, you know, this is belong to government of India. They should have, uh, you know, worked on a lot of developments in in uh, production areas, then um, processing areas, R and D, then uh, value addition, so many things. Like today, we had a lot of discussion on value addition, like uh, cashew meal, cashew butter. Uh, cashew uh, snacks, so many things. In cashew, uh, total cashew is 100% cash return. Correct. From your shell to the, the skin to the oil, so many. Uh, there is no wastage. No waste. There is totally, you get and, every, and in every step there is a value addition. Every step is value addition and there is money. So if we can do properly, uh, give uh, uh, the farmers or the processors or the business uh, people more uh, uh, research work and more uh, open mind with a lot of scopes of uh, business, the things can improve and government also have to involve, you know, totally by uh, seeing how we can value add, how so, to increase. So what Vietnam has done in last five to ten years to build a cashew industry, which India can learn from Vietnam? Yeah, see, we, 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 India has to learn a lot from Vietnam. This is one, one, I'm talking about cashew. There are many industries, uh, India also have to catch up, you know, and like See, today Vietnam has taken this as a, a trade and industry and Vietnam is not consuming, it's 90% is exported and you see today uh, Vietnam, uh, their uh, infrastructure, their processing house are well equipped and uh, they have uh, made uh, the facilities uh, to the standards of according to the Europe standards, US standards for export markets, Japanese standards, to whichever country norms they follow the norms so they make uh, the production to that quality level which uh, makes uh, the buyers from uh, different part of the country have their norms you know for every food product there is a lot of uh, food inspection checks so in uh, doing this uh, whether it was lead was taken by private sector or lead was taken by uh, government no um, since there's a pressure see vietnam has uh, again have uh, very good uh, business networking with various country as well as they have very good uh, trade agreements, free trade agreements signed with uh, many countries, which is giving them a very good uh, uh, door to export, for not only uh, 
cashew many products so that's a way vietnam has to follow all that norms of those countries uh, which have the clear mandate uh, for products coming from vietnam should specify with all that uh, regulations so that government is putting you know into those the processing like the cashew association or the, uh, coffee association or rice association wherever those norms so if that only in principle then only you can get exported and as well as the factory also do comply with all that uh, process regulations like having uh, the, the, all the uh, latest machineries and uh, assure that they will maintain those standards so that they are having a market share in the export market so you are saying that uh uh, industry is serious about quality yes yes very much india uh, industry does not cut corners when it comes to quality not i don't say like that uh, india also may have uh, quality norms but i don't think uh, in, in general because uh, uh, honestly speaking uh, there is always a challenges uh, you know when you we import any material like it is a product like you see feed industry i tell we vietnam is a big uh, requirement for uh, import of feed like soybean meal uh, then uh, red seed meal corn many feed uh, comes from india not small quantity more than million tons of uh, a, one of the biggest uh, india's export to vietnam but recent time of course soybean uh, pricing is one part uh, which uh, we can't compete with uh, us or uh, brazil uh, which uh, they sell at a very competitive price because it's a uh, non gmo and india's is gmo uh, India India does not GMO GMO and that is GMO. Yes. So, but you see, the earlier part we had a lot of quality issues because of uh, phyto, you know, a lot of uh, infections, infections, contamination, pest problems. So drastically, there was a lot of issues. When many times Indian phyto uh, department have come here to sort out the problem with the Vietnam phyto department. So I'm also the past chairman of Indian Business Chamber. I see. Yeah. So I also many times I worked with the government of agencies uh, to see how. to settle uh, this issues and in the past like this many problems of problem so in normal you know this no many problems do happens when we import cotton so if if uh, based on your experience of 33 years in vietnam if three four important messages which you want to give to uh, indian business community and two three messages for policy makers so that in a short span if vietnam can do India can also do. Sure, we sure. have a whole lot of competent oh, people, a yes, yes, lot yes. of opportunities yes, within yes, India. Yes, sure, sure. So, what are those three, four action points for private sector and two, three action points for government which they should do so that India can also develop faster? See, actually, one I always uh, will tell you know uh, at the bottom point, uh, the farmers have to be given good uh, boost by uh, you know supporting them with a good uh, practice of farming. And number two, they should get good uh, their uh, return of crops. They should have a good pricing so that the farmers sustain. Because I see these days farmers don't get much money. What Vietnam farmers do get, sustainability is very important. But in India, we have MSP. Is there any MSP here? Here, actually, you see there is no such uh, thing. It's open pricing policy, and as long. Uh, so then how is, farmers are getting better price because you see if we say today you, uh, you whatever the market condition today if international market is uh, this is the price level so your uh, processor or whatever they will have a par with uh, after their purchasing cost they will fix a price so they give some reasonable if not there is market competition so you will not get your Uh, amount of like uh, coffee processing. If so you it don't means say, more competition increases the farmer's price. Yes, yeah, no, increases the farmer's price. So, so that we should a, encourage competition instead of government intervention. Yeah, there's government intervention. Because in in India, for everything, government says we will buy. Yes. Instead of that, yes, government should encourage more yes. investment. Yes. So that private sector can compete Com and prices and goes and up. And prices goes up and farmers gets benefit. Correct. So when farmers gets benefit, so they produce good quality. Okay, first they will ensure the quality product because if not, they cannot use proper uh, processing or farming techniques or use right uh, uh, chemicals or pesticides or whatever as per the norms. So they may not get a good yield. So or number next. two, uh, and the second process always I feel is that uh, that is one bigger challenge. The second is that how to make uh, value addition in 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 a, in a more uh, quality conscious uh, because India is itself a big domestic market. Like uh, today, we had uh, this small session coffee. They said many types of coffee, and there is very uh, taste. That. So yeah, you were talking. 
so in that like that we should think you see we have a very good coffee very good uh, products so we have to develop uh, you see we india is a coffee drinker so many people drink coffee so many drink tea so but how to you know make some value addition in the processing so instead of keeping only limited uh, product and uh, uh, customer has no choice but uh, like what we have seen uh, 35 40 years back we had nothing much choice we have only one choice of car one choice of Correct. but now yeah. things have changed India also growing. So we have to focus on value addition, yeah, variety, value addition, development, variety development, product development, yeah, development. What is the message for government? See, I say always government, I think they have to give uh, more, uh, you know, because since uh, we have to, uh, we have to keep whatever technology modernization is happening on one side, we, we need end of the day is uh, our food. Food is, uh, is one of the biggest uh, for everybody to survive. So in that sector, uh, food, uh, what the, the main uh, value addition, agro products, government have to play a bigger role by developing you know more um, um, quantity volumes to be increased so according to the, uh, the consumption demand as but well is, as the is there any specific policy incentive in vietnam which encouraged uh, high productivity and exports yeah so you see government actually have to you know you know make some good policies uh, for the producing farmers including the smes or processing house industries with uh, very good, good uh, conditions which will enhance uh, better uh, you know qualities and a lot of r d to be done r d by okay. seeing uh, what so basically what you're saying is the policy should be stable it should be motivating motivated yeah and yeah. you see simple like agribadi today i will just tell you another one example uh, just small you should understand you see today agribadi in india we consume a lot because it's a domestic daily use in our daily life. And today you see we import from Vietnam. Agarwattis. Machinery. Machinery for Agarwattis. Machinery, raw materials, the bombastic. Interesting. Production, everything. So recent time only Vietnam, India banned the, the Agarwattis import. That is unperfumed stuff. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I think there is a lot to learn from Vietnam friends and uh, we will continue such discussions with our friends in Vietnam. Sure. The purpose was of this discussion is to see that how a small economy like Vietnam has become a global powerhouse in agro products. So, Ramesh thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and you, uh, we will interact with you. Thank more. you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, okay. yeah, thank we are you. sure we are, anytime you need information, support, we are there to provide any assistance by anybody in development, in, in connecting with Vietnam in the industries, we are there. Anytime we are ready to support. Thank so you. We'll see so that much. our country uh, develop into a more uh, better prospect.